Welcome to the Caregiven Podcast. I'm Inga. And I'm Julie. And long story short, we have Caregiven. We are two mom entrepreneurs who have built an in home care business from the ground up, guided every step of the way by God's care and fueled by agape love. Almost 14 years later, we felt called to create this podcast as a resource for families with caregiving needs. Whether you care for a family member or are looking for advice on professional caregiving, we want this to be a platform to support you. Each week, we will come to you with encouraging stories of families who have found the right balance for their loved ones, tips for how to care for them and you, and much more. We hope you continue to join us each week as we share in this exciting new journey together. Hello, Sunshines, and hello, Julie. Well, hello, Inga. You're looking very bright today. I am. Smarticle, too. Oh, incredibly smarticle and bright. <laughs> yeah, so summer, here yes. we are. Yes, we what are. What have you been doing with your summer? In the throes. Well, well now that it's so hot, I'm <laughs> trying to keep cool. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Like, when it's winter, we're just complaining that it's so cold. Yes. When it's summer, it's like, it's yes. too hot. never happy. Never, ever, ever happy. Yeah, no, I like it a lot. I just don't like being laying in bed just hot. Yeah. So you got to get the old fans and everything going, but it's, it's been beautiful. I'm the worst though. Cause I have a fan and my electric blanket on at the same time. So <sighs> multiple Just times Kevin on this podcast, that. I've said you are weird. Well, yes, that's not wrong. <laughs> no one's debating that, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, well, I think let's just go ahead and get to our verse and then we'll get into our topic of the day. You bet. Righto. So today we have a Philippians chapter one, verses three through six. This is Thanksgiving and prayer. It says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Yep. Yep. I like the very first few words of that. <laughs> Say them again. I thank my God every time I remember you. Yes. Yes. And today we're talking about headstones. Aww. And that is kind of that remembering you. Yes. Yeah. So that's right. where that came from. Well, that's very good. Yes. Did you bring us a good news story today? <laughs> I don't know if it's a good news story, but it's awful darn funny. Okay. So um, there was a uh, an obituary mm -hmm. that you don't usually think that they're going to be humorous, but there are some funny ones. Mm -hmm. And this one was particularly funny um, about this James Loveless okay. and, and his kids wrote it. And I won't read it all. I'll just read some of the, the, hot, the hot spots. Um, Born and raised in Kentucky in 1963, a state that had recently been leaning toward more liberal values, we might add, Jamie, a divorcee, father, grandfather, and proud owner of a few lots in the park trailer park, had had enough and died on us June 14th in order to avoid another presidential stolen election mishap in the near future. <laughs> As a gluttonous eater of fried food and snake ca uh, snack cakes, as well as the occasional chili cheese dog, James tried in vain to give up the ghost by clogging his arteries and having a stroke in 2015. Oh his twin boys, Rocky and Rodney, had other plans and made him go to the hospital. <laughs> Well, while waiting in the ER at the hospital, he was heard saying, let's make a break for it, only to be heard by one of the hospital staff and forced to go through the procedure. He was too excited. To, he, he wasn't too excited about the prospect, but went anyway. On many occasions in life, James was seen in his backyard at the trailer park during the early hours of the hours of the morning, hammering beers, standing over country style ribs and yelling, it's got a head like a cat on it. <laughs> While nearby neighbors would peek out their windows, bearing looks of disgust and amazement at his party guests as they were slurring remarks about needing to speed up his cooking style. We've been here since five o'clock. I've got to work in the morning. <laughs> we don't know if he was married, but he was definitely was a ladies man. <laughs> there was Kathy, Mary Lou, Tammy, Deborah, Carrie, Tina, et cetera, et cetera. It's in the bones, he told us, proudly pointing to his skinny, pasty white legs. <laughs> Women love a good shin. <laughs> So anyway, um, he loved his, um, Jamie loved his family more than anything else in the world, except ice cold bush, room temperature um, bush, T-bones, New York rib, prime rib, shrimp, swimming, <laughs> poker, hatchback, <laughs> Mustang GTs, tank tops, and it, it just went on and on. He leaves behind his second favorite son, Rocky, um, his favorite son, Rodney, um, and then as well as a pair of old boxers, which have Buttweiser, the king of rears, printed on the design. He will be moderately missed. 
<laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh. And then there was one that I wrote one time about a, a, a gal that was just very debutante. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because they talked about the charities that <laughs> she gave to it. I, you just rolled and I just appreciate the humor. Mm-hmm. Some people might not. I mean, I know when we were working on, on the last two obituaries in my family that we had to work on it was a serious business we yes. wanted to make sure we didn't forget names forget dates or wrong dates and and these people just put it all to the wind and just yeah. you know cut a rug on it so everybody yeah. there's not a right or wrong way to do it well that I I want to meet Jamie because <laughs> I want to have met Jamie yes. because he sounds like a heck of a guy and oh, a lot of Lordy. fun to be around yeah and Rocky and Rodney good for them yeah <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my goodness. Well, yours was funny. Mine is just super endearing. And yes. it's actually um, a TikTok video that, well, somebody saw this clip somewhere and turned it into TikTok. It's on there in a couple different accounts, but I'm just going to play it. And then if you are watching this, you'll be able to actually see the video. Mm. It's basically about this um, deer, a doe that stops in the road and will not move. And so it's basically what happens and why it happens. So. Get a Kleenex out. Yeah, get a Kleenex. It's pretty good. Look, this doe unexpectedly blocked a car and refused to leave. So, the driver, with curiosity, the man immediately got out of the car to see what was happening. And the gaze of the doe, the man sensed that she seemed to need help. He concluded that the mother deer must have encountered some difficulty. So, he quickly got back into his car and followed the mother deer along the road. They traveled for about a kilometer until they reached a small house where they found a fawn entangled in a soccer net. It turned out that this was the reason why the mother deer had stopped the car. The mother deer was very anxious, indicating to the man that he should save her child. It was clear that motherly love transcends species, as the power of maternal love drove the doe to risk blocking a human vehicle. If the mother had not done so, her child might have been trapped there forever. Understanding the mother deer's intention, the driver was deeply moved. He immediately crouched down and started figuring out how to rescue the trapped fawn. However, the fawn had never had close contact with humans before and was extremely frightened. It kept making heart-wrenching cries, trying to run towards its mother's embrace. Meanwhile, the man comforted the fawn. While quickly attempting to free it, the mother deer could only run back and forth nearby, believing that the kind-hearted man would surely save her child. However, the net was wound too tightly, and the driver could not release it by putting out, so he had to get a pair of scissors and cut the net. With the nearest tool being a pair of scissors, the driver carefully cut through the net and eventually freed the baby deer. And then the panicked fawn ran straight into the woods. But the story didn't end there. Just as the man was driving back, mother deer led the fawn to the road that the man had to pass. The man quickly got out of the car to check the situation. To his amazement, the fawn ran up to him and knelt down, expressing gratitude for saving its life. Truly, all living beings have spirituality. Finally, let's praise the greatness of maternal love. And finally, please, for the great mother's love. Anyway, so it's it's a lot better if you can actually watch what oh, happens. It's so cool. Yeah. Just crazy to me. Yeah, that was really cool. So neat. And the little fawn is like so thankful and yeah. grateful. It's just like. I know you showed it to me and I actually teared up. I know. I wasn't. I've done a lot of things today that I thought would have made you cry. And that wasn't one of them. <laughs> you were so mean. <laughs> It's just the phone calls after phone calls uh, after phone calls. Uh, yeah. Schedule questions. Oh, Lord almighty. <laughs> I'm a hardened heart. Yeah. <sighs> well, yes. anywho. So headstones. We're yes. going to be talking about headstones today, about kind of thoughtfulness on how you pick them out. Yeah. Some of the costs about them. So, yeah. So as you all know, at this point, um, I uh, task myself with coming up with a headstone for my brother. My sister did a bunch of stuff on his behalf. My brother did a bunch of stuff. Um, we're trying to take some of that away from mother. And I was the one that said, Oh, I can do a headstone. Cause I thought this is easy. <laughs> and so I had, um, scheduled some time to visit with somebody um, in town that does headstones. And boy, I have learned so much. I was like, this has to be a podcast because you don't know about headstones until you have to do one. Yeah. And it's really been a longer process than I thought and a lot to know. And so we're just going to kind of talk about mistakes to avoid, um, kind of what costs are and, and the journey that I've been on and, and go from there. All right. Well, let's yeah. do it. Yes. So tell us about the mistakes to avoid. Oh, right. Uh, choosing a headstone without knowing what questions to ask the cemetery or the monument retailer. Um, you know, and and uh, t- just to be honest with you, this is going to sound like it sounds. To pass away, it's big business. 
it is very expensive to pass away. I, I thought I immediately knew what I had in mind. Mm-hmm. And then, but it's just shocking how much everything can cost so quickly. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's not like I'm, I'm trying to be cheap or anything, but I also need to be a little cost effective. Right. But, um, I just, I just, for every aspect of the funeral, there's costs associated and you just don't know those things. Right. Until you're in and, the And a lot of, of times, I mean, not everybody has just an open checkbook to exactly. be able to pay for all of those things. So you've done something about getting some insurance mm-hmm. ahead of time because mm-hmm. you want to be very kind to your children. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, the, they can figure it out. I'm not going to be here. So no. <laughs> right. anyway, well, and yeah. it's interesting because basically you say choosing the headstone without knowing what questions to ask the cemetery or monument retailer, like how do you figure out those questions? But also the next yeah. one, choosing a headstone that doesn't meet the cemetery's requirements or having the, the cemetery reject the memorial. So I wouldn't have even thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so I, um, just even going to where, um, my brother and my dad are rested, um, I've looked and it's a, it's a very old place that there's the stand up ones. There's the flat ones. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason. There's not as many rules in that rural country one as some places will only nowadays allow flat ones. And I don't know if it's a mowing thing, uh, you know, it, it's a so lot basically of basically you to need upkeep. to know the rules oh. where you're and who knew that there was rules right <laughs> well not a lot of people probably even know or have that I mean some mm-hmm. families have their plots I mm-hmm. guess is that what it's called exactly um but not everybody has that planned out yeah no right? no 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 and the other thing is um uh like when you go to put the headstone, not only do you have to pay for the headstone and all of it, but then there's like a hundred dollar fee for it, at this particular cemetery to to lay the concrete for the headstone. Yeah. And I remember mother didn't know that till all of a sudden she had an extra charge when it came to dad's situation right. way back when. So she, when I was telling her about this, she goes, now don't forget the hundred dollars, which she said, you don't know that till the very end. And they tack on another hundred dollars, oh, man. Yeah. So buying from a cemetery or a fun- funeral home, that's not qualified to sell headstones. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there was a qualifier. Mm-hmm. Choosing a headstone based on the lowest price instead of the best value. Yep. I can see that. Um, buying headstone without receiving a detailed itemized list, estimate, or invoice describing exactly what you will receive and pay for. Right. That's kind of kind of like what you're talking about. But was the the concrete was a separate charge. Yeah. It wasn't from the headstone place. Nope. So it no, was, it was on top of yeah. what was going to happen then when we went to lay it. Well, and you had a situation today, not with headstones, but with a phone situation <laughs> where you had changed some things around and uh-huh. were told it's one thing and then you get the bill and it's two times as much. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. So, oh, we'll just wait till next month. Let's see what happens Let's next month. Let's see how it washes like, out. No, 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 no. Yeah, we want to see the itemized quote on this. <laughs> yeah. And that's and the, everything in life, right? Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. Um, what the, I found this one to be really interesting. Uh, a mistake people do is feel pressured to buy before they're, you're emotionally or mentally ready to buy. There is an accepted waiting period of a minimum of two weeks after your loved one passes. Hmm. I had no idea. I didn't even know there was a, a, a time. Right. Um, and we waited a little bit longer right. on this one. And then when I talked to my mother about it, she's so cute because she's always very, very thrifty. Um, and she was like, I need you to do it through this company because that's the one that did dad's. Mm-hmm. And once a year, they do a have a granite sale. And so she knew all about the granite oh, sale. Wow. So when I called them, I said, now, what time of the year do you have your granite sale? <laughs> and it was, um, so these are things that you don't even realize. Yeah, until you're in it. Yeah. Well, and do you have to do a headstone immediately? No. I mean, there's just kind of like the socially no. accepted, this is... Yeah, well, and it takes a long time to yeah. get it done because even the place that I'm going to use, they're actually having a business in Boise do it. And then Boise comes up every so often and places them wherever they oh, need wow. to be. So it it can take six months. It can take a year. Right now with Andrew's spot, there's just a little thing stuck in there that says his name and the dates and everything. Okay. Um, so it's time for us to do this. Right. Um, but it, it just was one of those things that truly I had tasked myself to do it. I didn't realize how emotional it was going to be. Oh, I can't imagine. Who knew? Yeah. 
Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, and then it also says um, um, a buying mistake is not knowing the difference between a grave marker and a memorial that tells the life story of the person. Well, when we get into it a little bit further down the road, the newest markers, they can take a laser and they can tell the whole story of a picture of when you're a baby through when you were in middle school to high school, graduation, college, gr children, grandchildren. You oh, can, wow. And, um, and it can be laser etched in there. And that's so, more of a memorial. That's what I'm assuming that right. means. But mm -hmm. um, it's amazing what they can do nowadays. Wow. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. It also says basically choosing or making a headstone with the wrong type of material that essentially isn't going to stand the test of time. Oh. Um, choosing temporary instead of a permanent headstone. Buying the wrong size, shape, or granite color headstone. Mm -hmm. Choosing a headstone size, design, color, shape based upon other headstones around the loved one's grave or based upon previous relatives' headstones. Mm -hmm. So making that decision not for the individual, but more so based around... Mm -hmm what you think you have to do. Well, and it's funny that that's being said um, because dad's is a headstone from the veterans mm. and it's beautiful. It's a dark, it's like a chocolate brownish, oh, wow. bronzish. And, um, and I do want it to be similar right. yes. to Andrew's. So yes. they'll um, kind of just meld together. Yes. Yeah. That, that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And let me see. Uh, don't buy go to, in the wrong size. Yep. Who knew? They come in every size and they come from flat to up to skyscraper. It's crazy. <laughs> they also say buying a headstone from a hobby engraver. Yeah. Somebody that maybe just started in their garage last yeah. week. Well, think <laughs> about it. These, these markers are going to be out in all of the elements. Mm -hmm. The winter, the freezing, the hot, the summer, the, you know, all of it. And... Um, the, all, the ones that I have seen have held up against all of that. Yeah. And they're very, very old. And some of the old ones are just unbelievably beautiful. I'm sure it's like with everything, there's there's quality and mm -hmm. then there's not quality. Yeah. So. And that would be very, very sad is if mm -hmm. you looked at your family's monument and it started chipping. Yeah. Because you yeah. use something substandard. The other thing is basically you've got to verify the correct spelling of names, correct <laughs> birth date, correct date of death. So make sure that you do that. You are right. Yes. Yes. Um, that, that is important. How about um, buying a headstone online from an unknown source? Mm -hmm. um, neglecting to verify the correct spellings, like you said. Um, family issues. Assuming relatives will help pay mm -hmm. <laughs> for the headstone uh, or help make important decisions. Some relatives are not psychologically or emotionally able to help with the task. Many relatives are financially unwilling or unable to contribute. Mm -hmm. Leaving a relative out of the decision-making process and receiving negative feedback after the headstone is placed on the grave. Um, negative influence from other people or not knowing or understand the potential for negative remarks, actions, or feedback from the family or friends. And then um, scattering loved ones' ashes without considering the pain caused to current and future relatives, especially children. Neglecting mm. to memorialize the loved one with the headstone uh, may cause pain to current and future relatives and friends. Mm. Um, and in our case, I am making sure that um, I've asked every step of the way from um, my sister and my brother, yeah. but then mother has the end all be yeah. all call on it. And um, it, it, they all seem to work really, really well. You guys have done a, an amazing job with, with the passing of your dad. And then now yeah. with Andrew, it's, it's, because we see a lot, uh -huh. right? We see a ton of family dynamics that when we're working. They can't work together. They cannot work together. Yeah. And they just, I mean, some in some situations, they're just going to fight just to fight. Yeah. Because that's what they've always done. <laughs> right. And it doesn't have to make yeah. sense. And yeah. so watching you guys go through this and be united has been really very yeah. heartwarming, honestly. Yeah. And what I did is I went through... The online stuff that you can see, mm -hmm. and you don't even have any idea the millions of bedillions of different kinds of options you have out there. Um, Andrew was in and out a full cowboy. Mm -hmm. And so there there's I came up with three different options. There's just the cowboy on the horse, um, a cowboy with some cows, um, and but three different looks. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, how about one of these? And so um, we started there. And then we're going to put the name, the birth date, the, the date of death. And then I was like, do we have 
a verse? Do we have something that you want to be put on there? Mm -hmm. But everybody's got a say in it. Right. So yeah. That's where we're going with that. And then like mistakes that can damage you, um, things like buying from someone that's not a certified memorialist or basically member of the Monument Builders of North America Trade Association. <laughs> can you imagine? I did, who knew that there was a trade association with right? that? Right. Buying without knowing consumer rights and laws and the protection of the Consumer Advocacy mm -hmm. Committee that's sponsored by that MBNA. Um, buying without receiving a memorial protection program, without knowing about if it's a crime situation, that there are some oh. state-funded crime victims compensation programs. And then maybe buying without a guarantee or a warranty or any vandal prevention features. See, so, who would think about vandalism? Well, right. Who and but, but there are deranged out there, right? Yes. It's just crazy. Um, a quick checklist for choosing a memorial is go to the cemetery and look at all of the existing memorials there. Take a pad right on and the tape measure um, and your camera. And um, find out the written rules and regulations of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, after reading the regulations, decide where you will purchase the plot and what size and shape the cemetery will allow mm -hmm. choose the shape color size of the memorial you want to honor and respect the life of the one you loved uh just decide how and what historical information will be graved their name any nicknames the dates um and then you even have to decide what font <laughs> who knew you had to pick a font i can barely pick a font when i write a letter <laughs> I know. Do they have, they probably have some pretty standard. They do. They have the standard and we have actually um, a picture of that where it shows it in cursive or just the block and all of that. Mm. It's just, who, who knew? There's just a lot of decisions to be made and it's a very long-term decision. Oh, so you yeah. want to make sure that you have all of your information in order. Yeah. Yep. So basically just make that checklist and just follow, follow it. You can get all of this information online mm -hmm. and, um, and, but do a little bit of research before you just jump in. I thought I was going to go with one company. And then when I started looking at prices and all of that, w w after talking with mother, I realized that there was another place that was significantly less, not the quality or anything, but mm -hmm. it was just a different price set. I don't, I don't mm. really know what the big difference was, but it was a lot of difference wow. in terms of the money. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So you, um, on our show notes, probably will have this choosing the engraved letter style. If mm -hmm. people want to look at that, mm -hmm. it just kind of talks about the different options that you have. Um, the one sheet that I have talks about the different sizes and the costs. Mm. Um, even the color from Georgia gray, Dakota mahogany, black granite, blue pearl. It's amazing the different colors that you can get. But then what I found out is if you're going to engrave a picture, it has to be on the black granite. And of course, black granite is one of the most expensive. Sure. What I initially had come up with thinking that we were going to engrave a picture was well over $4,000. And of course, talking to mother, she's like, oh, no, no, we don't need to have that much. You right. know, we, and the other concern was we don't want to upstage dad's. Right, right. Even right. his is very beautiful. It's just really a, a nice headstone. But um, it, we also didn't want it to be that much different sure. than Andrew's. So um, anyway, and then they've got the ones that come up off the ground, mm -hmm. you know, and, but basically you're looking at around $1,000 up to easily $20,000. Just for the headstone. Just for all of it. Just the picking the fonts, the the color, the sizes. Um, it's and just, the, and you are talking. I mean, that is just the headstone, right? Yeah, that's that's the whole head. That whole right. Because that's not everything. That's, that's not the cost of the entire funeral. The casket. No, that, that is just, just the headstone. The headstone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So um, make sure that you um, get quotes. But make sure you're going, like you said, to a reputable place. Right. I cannot, I would never be able to do that job. Mm -hmm. Like you, you tasked yourself with it for your family. Mm -hmm. I can't even decide what color of fingernail polish I want. <laughs> <laughs> I could never be in charge of picking the headstone. Oh, yeah. Well, what I'm doing is coming up with the, my favorites mm -hmm. and then I'm happy with whatever they pick. Yes. And, and so I, I think they'll, we're not a hundred percent done with the project. I've been kind of tippy toeing around it a little bit because mm -hmm. you got to be in the right mindset. Yes. And so, um, basically, you know, we'll all easily agree on a color or this or that. Richard and I were immediately like, oh, yep, the horse with the cows. That's the one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mother will probably pick the verse. Yes. And go from there. 
Wow. Yeah. So can I ask you a question? Uh, did you did you just have to go out and find this company that you're going to work with or were you given referrals from the funeral home or? Well, so no. Um, so the, the place that we're going to end up with, um, we went through the funeral home okay. that we used for my brother Okay. and they have a place and, um, they were just like, this is who we use. And then I asked prices and they were, uh, a lot less than the first place that I was going to check. And, and I already know their quality is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, and they were very, very, come on in, let's get this worked out. I'll walk you through every step and I was like well can't I just do it over the phone but they really want to take the time with you to make sure you're okay through this whole process yeah. Yeah. and it, it's very very sweet of them and they do outsource it but it's a company they've used for a billion years sure. like I said it's out of Boise so then Boise when they come up every I don't remember exactly but every once in a while they come up and then set them all Right. So basically the company that you're working with, they're doing all the paperwork and the ordering and figuring out yep. that stuff. And then they're having somebody else actually make Build them and, yes. and set them. Yep. Okay. Yep. But I didn't even know. I didn't even know that it's granite came in different colors like it does <laughs> and, and all of the things. I had no idea what I was getting myself yeah. into. And after I started reading on the, on the web and I started getting pamphlets mailed to me, um, I was like, this is a big business. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal. And it's nothing to take lightly. And after you stop and, and think about that, it's like, well, it's, it's going to represent your loved one forever. Yes. It will be there Yes, for years and years and years. So then so it better be yep. beautiful. And then you're willing to, to put into it because yeah. it has value beyond just yeah. that. Yes, exactly. So you brought, um, there is, if you are a veteran, mm -hmm. And you did this with your dad, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so go ahead and talk to us about that. Well, basically, uh, when you pass, the VA will provide a free grave marker. Okay. There is criteria um, upon, upon request and for no charge, a government headstone or marker for an, um, the unmarked grave of any deceased eligible veteran in any cemetery around the world, regardless of their date of death. Oh, wow. For eligible veterans that died on or after November 1st, 1990, and those graves are marked with a privately purchased headstone, VA will also furnish a headstone or marker to supplement the graves <clears throat> or a medallion to be affixed to a privately purchased headstone. Oh, wow. That's so neat. it's they, they take their memorials mm -hmm. and respect of their veterans to heart. Very, very seriously, yes. Flat markers in granite, marble, and bronze, and upright headstones in granite and marble are available. Mm -hmm. um, bronze niche markers are also available um, for cremated remains. Cremated remains, yeah. Yep. yep. So basically, there's eligibility that you have to get through, mm -hmm. um, and then the type of markers, the upright, the flats, the flat marble or granite, uh, just medallions. Once again... Wow. There's decisions to be made. And, and then basically, so how, so someone applies, the, mm -hmm. dece the decedent's next of kin, authorized representative on behalf of the decedent, or an authorized representative on behalf of the next of kin. Yeah. It yeah. has to be one of those people that would apply for it. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And awesome. they're, they're, they're beautiful. They really are. Was it easy to, mother did that? this one. Okay. I hadn't even realized. Oh, wow. I hadn't even realized on this one. Huh. And yeah, so. Anyway, so that's, that is there, um, and you can just get on the government site there and look that up mm -hmm. for a veteran's grave marker. Yeah. So. Interesting, like, so many things now, we can do things ahead of time, so even yeah. if, like, with you, you yeah. know, you've planned out a lot of your stuff. But you know what I hadn't thought of is, because, like I said, Mike and I have difference of opinions on how we want things to go. Sure. And I'm just going to be tossed in the wind <laughs> and just be like I have been my whole life. <laughs> and um, he's not that. He'll, he'll be um, where he wants to be. And so what I'll probably have to do is get some kind of a memorial headstone to be with his. Right. Even though I'm not there. Right. But to be there. So I don't know. I hadn't thought about a headstone. So does it like depend who goes first is how things are going to sh actually shake out <laughs> since you have so. a difference of opinion? <laughs> well, and it doesn't have to be right then. Yeah. You know, uh, who knows? Gosh, that's it's deep. Yeah. There's lots and lots to think about. Yep. Um, one of the things that I, I read, and it was just way adorable that I have to share this. Um, there's um, Kay's Fudge, a late Utah grandmother's 
recipe was engraved on the tombstone. Oh. You can put whatever you want. She must have been famous for that. Well, she is now. <laughs> yeah. So it says Kay Andrews passed at age 97 in 2019, but her legacy um, as a warm and caring grandmother has endured and taken on a new life thanks to social media. Um, so basically what happened though is somewhere in the recipe, they didn't get it quite right. Oh no. So people have been trying and trying to make the fudge and it's not quite like grandma's. Oh. So something was missed. Oh man, and that's a big mistake. So speaking of proofing something, right? <laughs> yes. um, well, when it came to making treats of her own, um, Andrews was a master of making fudge. Her grandfather daughters still remember the now world famous fudge being really good. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, they just love that. On the back is where she put it. Uh, while there's is a saying that some people take secrets to the grave. In Andrew's case, she proudly had the recipe to one of her most beloved treats engraved on her grave for all to see. That recipe has now been seen by people all over the world. Wow. <laughs> so I just wanted to tell that story to say, you can do whatever you want. Yep. You yeah. sure can. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, do you have a grandma saying or something to wind us down with? I do. What uh, is this, it today? This is another one from Effie Jackson, my grandma's uh, scrapbook. Okay. Uh, what life's about is learning. We must flow with daily living, planting, waiting, growing with the roses and the weeds. What you're about is being there while we go through it. Thank you, Lord. And that was in her scrapbook from Nairata, Montana on uh, the 24th of September, 1983. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a find. It was all who, in old typewriter. So where, who, because re that just recently came about, yeah, right? Who yeah. had the scrapbook? Uh, so um, my aunt, um, uh, let's see, Jeannie has it. And there was a day that her and Janny, my cousin, were going through it. And they started oh. sending me little pictures of stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's so good. Huh. I love it so cool. much. Well, I guess yes. that's it. Yes. So do your research and look into that headstone stuff before just, it's an emergency. Just understand that it is a touch emotional. Yes. It really is. It's kind of like you're finally pulling together the last bits. Yeah. And um, it's it's not always easy, but just, I've just taken it a bit at a time. Okay. What's, what is our picture going to be? What is yeah. the color going to be? And, and, and hopefully you have a great relationship like I do with my siblings and, and mama to be able to pull it all together and, and not cause any more stress. Yeah. So yeah. But that's it. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that, Julie. And you bet. I guess it's peace out, Girl Scouts. Yo, have a good day.